Hello everyone, thanks for watching this presentation. My name is Roy Liu, I'm from Eureka Biotechnology, and today I'm going to present to you the lentiviral vector production method based on stable producer cell lines. Here is the confidential disclaimer of the company. To begin this presentation, let's first take a look at the lentiviral vector in the gene therapy. As everyone watching this video knows, we are in the era of the gene and cell therapy. With more and more clinical trials in this field, the viral vectors are the key to the cell and gene therapy. With increasing demand of these therapies, the viral vector manufacturing is becoming the bottleneck of this industry. So let's take a look what challenges we are really now facing. In 2019, the National Institutes for Innovation in Manufacturing Biopharmaceuticals has published the Gene Therapy Roadmap, explaining the current manufacturing challenges and the technology development status, which can be summarized into four categories listed here, which is plasmid production, packaging cell lines, and upstream and downstream challenges in the viral vector production. In today's presentation, we are honored to introduce our answer to the challenges just mentioned. We name it the EULV system. It's an inducible lentiviral vector stable producer cell lines with scalable process technologies. Generally speaking, the EULV system is an inducible stable producer cell lines adapted to high cell density suspension culture in the chemical defined medium. This stable producer cell line no longer requires transient plasmid transfection. Instead, all the required packaged genes such as EMV, GAGPRO, REV, as well as customized therapeutic genes or commonly called gene of interest GOI are stably inserted into the genome of the producer cell line, and the production of the lentivirus is simply achieved by the chemical induction. And this slide shows the EULV technology roadmap. It's a schematic diagram of the EULV system development and the lentivirus production. It mainly involves three phases. In phase one, all the lentiviral packaging, ENV, GAG Pro, REV, and the components of the molecular switches are stably inserted into the genome of 293T cells to construct the EULV packaging cells. And the monoclonal cell lines are screened and tested. In phase 2, the customized GOI is stably inserted into the genome of the best clone of the EULV packaging cells to construct the producer cells. And the monoclonal cell lines are screened and tested. In phase three, the EULV producer cells are cultured on a large scale in a feed batch manner, and the lentivirus are produced when the inducers are added. So how to screen a superclone? There are three key factors. First is the higher population means of the viral production. Second is the higher population variance of the viral production. And third is the large number of screen size sample. In these figures, the X axis is a viral production title when the Y axis is the number of the clones. When we have a mixture of the cell lines, by our technology in cell line construction, we increased both average production titer and the performance variance in viral vector production. This guarantee a good start for the clone selection. Also, we adopted an automation assisted high throughput screen platform, ensure we won't miss few super clones. To increase the scale and accuracy of the screening, we built our own automation facility UBOX. It could perform routine operation of the cell culture, monoclonal cell screening, cell-based bioassay, viral titer quantitation, 
DOE material preparation and it has adapted to 384 to 6 well plates. With this, we can screen over 10,000 individual cell clones for each round of screening experiments. And also, we built an EU Bound X non staining live cell analysis system. The device is a part of the automation system shown in previous slide and can take photo of a 384 well plates in less than 5 minutes. Using this device and algorithm, the device can record, trace, analyze, and pick the monoclonal with the best performance. This slide shows the main data to construct the EULV system, which including the data for packaging cell line screening, evaluation of good clones, and the producer cell line screening. During the development of the packaging cell line, the PGK luciferase RES EGFP was used as the gene of interest. The insert is around 3.5 kp. Transduction titer quantitation of this lantivirus was performed in HT1080 cells, either by luciferase assay or by flow cytometry evaluating EGFP positive cells. These four figures at the top illustrate the screen results of the construction of the EULV packaging cell line, which include one monoclonal screen step to identify the single clone with good growth curve and four functional screen steps which identify the best production clones by measuring the luciferase transduction titer after transient transfection of luciferase plasmid. The X axis was the log scale of the luciferase unit in HT1080 after transduction and the Y axis indicates the number of the clones. The red line is the positive control which represents the transduction title of lentivirus produced by transient transfecting 293 T cells with 4 plasmids. The dashed line was the average title of all the clones that in that screen step. After 5 rounds of screening, the average transduction title was 10 times higher than the positive control. And after this experiment, we have got few clones which will show uh, to be the best performance. Then we want to see if they are really truly optimized. In principle, if all the packaging genes in this packaging cell line are fully optimized, for example the copy number, expression level, and relative ratio, no increase of the titer should be observed after further transfection of any packaging plasmid. As shown in the figure at the left bottom, the first three of the four figures indicate that after the transfection of any packaging plasmid or any combination of this packaging plasmid, no significant increase in viral titer was observed in these clones, which means the packaging genes in these packaging cell lines are optimized. And the fourth figure is the control. Finally, let's see the figure at the right bottom. We choose one of the packaging cell line to construct the producer cell line. And this figure shows a tighter result during the four rounds of screening. After four rounds of screening like this, the average tighter in screening four increased nearly 100 folds compared to the average tighter in screening one. One of the best producer clone were then selected for the further process development. The cell need to be adapted to the suspension culture, and the culture medium selection is key. We have screened and tested a group of commercially available medium. All of them are chemically defined mediums. The figures at the left shows with CDM2, the highest cell culture density can exceed 10 million cells per mil and maintain high cell viability after 6 days of continuous culture. The right figure shows that this median does not interfere virus production. Secondly, we optimize the inducer concentration and enhancer formulation. We use the DOE method to screen 4 compounds that can be used as enhancers and after optimization, 
virus yield was increased by 80%. This slide shows some data from our feed optimization study. In this study, we have achieved two goals. The first is a feed batch process without median exchange, and second is suspension culture in high cell density, which is over 10 million cells per mil. With this feed, the virus title was increased by four times. Median exchange is not required. And this feed batch process was stable when tested from 5 mil to 300 mil in a shaking flask. Here, I want to emphasize some crucial updates of EOLV system by combination of some key factors, including the optimization of cell line construction method, the cell screening method, and the redesign of lentiviral genome transcription cascades, virus production process, and etc. These three figures at the left show the title results for top four experiment designs A, B, C, D during three rounds of screening. The x-axis is a transduction titer measured in HT1080. For each round of screening, we have design A, B, and C. And each dot here represents a titer result from a single clone. After several rounds of screening from 384 well place to a suspension culture, clones from design B and C and design C D all had average titer higher than 100 million TU per mil, and the 03N18 clone from design B and the 01B1 clone from design D were the best clone, with titer higher than 400 million TU per mil, as we see in the right figure. Three top clones from each of the four designs were cultured for the stability test for 30 passages, which is 90 days. The luciferase title was measured every three passages, and data was summarized in the left. No significant title reduction was observed for all the 12 clones tested. As we see in the right, the clones in design D were slightly better than the clones from other designs, with higher average virus yield and the low batch to batch variance. Since we use luciferase acid for the virus title measurement during the construction of the UMV system, to reduce doubts about luciferase transduction title, we have the correlation between the three title measurement methods, the luciferase assay, the qPCR assay, and uh, the GFB facts. The results show in the first figure indicate all these three methods correlate well and the mean for each method very close. Second, we also use the qPCR method in the producer cell line screening and it is a universal method which is independent of the genome interest. The figure in the middle shows the data from the producer cell line screening. The qPCR titan method correlates well with the luciferase titan method and the, the qPCR method is good enough for the monoclonal screening. Third, another advantage of the EU LV system is we can combine the virus physical particle titer and the functional titer together during the producer cell line screening to screen the cell clone with high specific transduction activity. In another word, with lower empty capsid ratio. The figure on the right shows one example. The two clones in the blue circle produce less P24, but have higher transduction titer. Another concern about the lentivirus stable producer cell line is the non-induction leak. We choose clone with titer higher than 400 TU per mil for this leak study. The orange column indicated the virus titer after induction, and the virus titer is over 400 million TU per mil. The background noise measured in 293T and the EOLV packaging cell lines are around several hundred TU per mil, showed in light blue and light yellow. When cultured in the same condition as induced sample, the producer cell line, while without inducer, produced virus with the same titer as background, around 100 TU per mil. 
even the culture median is concentrated for 100 times by ultra centrifugation, the viral titer measured is still the same as the background control, which indicated the virus leak in the EULV system was probably less than 10 TU per mil. Here shows some process data using EULV system in the wave bio reactor. The left side diagram shows some in steps. Day one, we saw the cell culture in the flask expanded to day seven. After transfer to the wave bio reactor, culture for another five days when the cell density reached 10 million cells per mil. Then we add the inducer and the feed to start to produce lantivirus. On the day 14, the virus was harvested, purified, and uh, stocked afterwards. The figures on the right shows the cell density and viability of the producer cell line in one liter wave bio reactor. Inducers are added on day five when cell reach the density of 10 million cells per mil. Cell viability remain close to 90% when the virus are harvested. Compared with the conventional transient transduction, this production method using EULV system has less cell debris due to the high cell viability upon harvest. After five steps of purification, the virus purity could reach over 98% measured by HPLC. This table shows the results after purification. Around 530 billion TU per liter viral yield in the cell culture medium while 120 billion TU per liter viral yield after purification and inducer is not detected. So let's have a look back on the key manufacturing challenges in the lantiviral vector production. By using EULV, the stable cell line to produce lantivirus method, it will be much more simpler. We see here the deleted items means EULV has skipped over these challenges, while the tick means these challenges has been solved using EULV system. So, by using EULV system, the process for lentiviral vector production is significantly simplified. By skipping over the plasmid parts, it no longer needs the plasmid GMP, it reduced the size of the GMP infrastructure, it reduced the manpower and operation costs, it simplified the manufacture and the QC process. The EULV system not only improved the production efficiency, but also it brings your lentiviral vector to a stable, high quality, reproducible and easy to scale up manufacturing process. So here, I would like to have a quick recap of the EULV system. Comparing with the conventional plasmid transfection method, our EULV system uses stable cell line and inducer to produce the lantivirus. It has adapted to the suspension culture using the chemical defined medium and the feed batch production process. Lantivirus production using EULV system is simple with much less lot-to-lot -lot difference. After systematic and a comprehensive evaluation during the producer cell line screening, the lantivirus produced in these EULV producer cells are more homogeneous with significant lower empty capsid ratio. The titer in the culture medium can reach 800 million TU per mil which is at least 10 times higher than the full plasmid method. Importantly, using the EULV system could greatly reduce the production cost, which will be very important for the commercialization of the drugs. Currently, we started to provide the CRO service for the EULV system. Client can just simply provide your gene of interest and the monoclonal cells can be delivered in four months. Also, we can provide the optional service such as GOI optimization, small scale production, process development, and etc. At last, I would like to have a quick introduction of our company. Eureka Biotechnology was founded in 2014. 
we focused on the development of a range of core technology and process in the cell and gene therapy. We integrate the state-of-art technology not only in molecular biology, gene editing technology, and cell biology, but also robotics, big data, and bioinformatics technology. Other than the EULV system, Eureka Bio has also developed automation devices used in cell processing. The CellSap Pro system is a functionally closed automated cell processing system which can be used in multiple cell manufacturing process. Well, that's the end of my presentation and thank you and uh, you may find my contest in this slide. Thank you very much.